Welcome to Quantum. In today's talk, we explore a thought experiment by Einstein, Tolman, and Podolsky, one that suggests the past may be just as indeterminate as the future. At the heart of this idea lies the role of the observer and quantum measurement, which doesn't merely record outcomes, but converts quantum potentialities into classical memories. We propose that only the present truly exists, and that it is the conscious observer who lifts the degeneracy between the quantum future and the quantum past, reducing the latter into a remembered classical path. However, this reconstruction of the past can only extend so far. There exists a cutoff beyond which the past remains fundamentally quantum and indeterminate, just as classicality itself only emerges above certain thresholds and smooth space-time breaks down below the Planck scale. There exists, therefore, a cutoff, a boundary beyond which the past cannot be classically retrieved. This limitation is not arbitrary. It may arise from informational constraints, what data survives, thermodynamical constraints, increasing entropy and decoherence, or even cognitive constraints, limits of memory and perception. The indeterminacy of the quantum past may ultimately require deeper interpretations, linking to ideas such as the simulation hypothesis, Boltzmann brains, or the five-minute universe. We hope to explore those questions in future episodes. This talk is divided into two independent parts. In the first part, we present a general overview of the einstein tolman podolsky thought experiment and its underlying physics. In the second part, we offer a deeper analysis of the experiment's implications, exploring its conceptual foundations and physical consequences, particularly its challenge to the classical view of the past. The past is not what it seems. In 1931, Einstein, Tolman, and Podolsky challenged a foundational assumption of physics. While quantum mechanics clearly limits our ability to predict the future, it was still widely believed that the past could be fully reconstructed, that history was fixed, and only the future was uncertain. But their thought experiment revealed something far more radical. Using a simple setup, two particles emitted from a box, they showed that even the past becomes paradoxical when examined through the lens of quantum mechanics. The observer, they argued, could seemingly use measurements from the first particle to determine both the energy and arrival time of the second. But this would violate the energy-time uncertainty principle because energy and time are non-commuting observables in quantum theory. This paradox leads to a profound conclusion. Quantum mechanics imposes uncertainty not only on the future, but also on the past. Even history, it turns out, is subject to the same quantum limitations of measurement and interaction. If we strip away any special assumptions about observation, memory, or consciousness, we find that both past and future are merely potentialities, unrealized possibilities, that only become actual through observation. This is the quantum worldview without observer-centric metaphysics, and it resonates deeply with time-symmetric interpretations of quantum theory, like the two-state vector formalism, where past and future boundary conditions jointly inform the present. This challenges the classical intuition, still dominant today, that the past is real and remembered, while the future is unreal and imagined. Instead, quantum mechanics offers a time-symmetric reality in which both past and future exist only as quantum possibilities, and both require observation to become real. The arrow of time is not fundamental, it is emergent, tied to the structure of the observer. It is the act of observation that converts a block universe into presentism, that turns quantum uncertainty into classical causality, that transforms the potential past into a remembered path. In this view, the observer does not merely record the past, they participate in its construction. Yet even this power has limits. There is a cutoff, a boundary beyond which the past can no longer be reconstructed classically. Beyond it, the past remains quantum, indeterminate, and unreachable. This cutoff may arise from thermodynamic entropy, informational loss, or cognitive constraints, but its effect is clear. The past is not a fixed ledger. It is a construct emerging from interaction, shaped by observation, and bounded by the principles of quantum theory. This one thought experiment laid the groundwork for some of the deepest questions in quantum foundations. What is a measurement? What is locality? What is causality? 
and how does consciousness shape the reality we observe? Einstein, Tolman, and Podolsky didn't just help us rethink the future. They forced us to let go of the past. The einstein tolman podolsky Experiment In 1931, Albert Einstein, Richard Tolman, and Boris Podolsky proposed a simple but astonishing thought experiment. It wasn't about predicting the future. It was about something far more unsettling, whether we can know the past. Their experiment can be divided into four parts. Part 1. The Setup Imagine a small box filled with particles, all moving chaotically in thermal motion. This box has a tiny shutter, which opens briefly, just long enough for one or two particles to escape. These particles travel toward an observer positioned at a point we'll call O. In some instances, two particles are released simultaneously. The first particle travels directly to the observer. We call this the SO path, moving straight from the shutter to the detector. The second particle follows a longer path. It reflects off an ellipsoidal mirror before also arriving at the observer. This longer route is called the SRO path. Before and after the shutter opens, the box is weighed with high precision. By comparing the before and after readings, the observer determines the energy lost by the system. Now the distances of both particle paths, SO and SRO, are carefully chosen. The first distance, SO, is long enough so that the act of weighing the box doesn't affect the clock measuring the particle's arrival time. The second distance, SRO, is made even longer. Why? To allow enough time to reweigh the box before the second particle arrives. This setup is not just about timing, it's a trap for logic. Because if the observer could deduce both the energy and the arrival time of the second particle using measurements from the first, they would be violating one of the most fundamental rules of quantum mechanics, the uncertainty principle. That's because in quantum theory, Energy and time are non-commuting quantities. You cannot know both with arbitrary precision. Part two, key variables. Here are the key variables used in the experiment. T sub S is the time the shutter opens. It's unknown and must be inferred. T1 is the measured arrival time of the first particle. T2 is the measured arrival time of the second particle. The actual time of flight for the first particle is T1 minus T sub S. The actual time of flight for the second particle is T2 minus T sub S. Q is a point located between the source and the observer where we attempt to measure the momentum of the first particle. T bar one is the inferred flight time of the first particle. It is calculated from the momentum measurement as if the particle had not been disturbed. E bar one is the inferred energy of the first particle. And finally, E bar two is the inferred energy of the second particle it is simply the total energy loss from the box minus the energy of the first particle. Part 3. Measuring the shutter time. Here's how the observer attempts to determine when the shutter opened. Step 1. They measure the momentum of the first particle at point Q. Step 2. From this, they infer the particle's velocity and energy. Step 3. Using the known distance from the source to the observer, they compute what the particle's flight time would have been if it had not been disturbed after the measurement. But here's the catch. That assumption is only valid up to the point of measurement, Q. The actual time of flight is T1 minus T sub S. However, as point Q gets closer to the observer, our inferred time approaches the true flight time. By repeating this measurement at various Q positions and extrapolating, the observer gets an increasingly accurate estimate of the actual flight time. From this, the shutter time is inferred as T1 minus that extrapolated flight time. Part four, inferring the properties of the second particle. Now we turn to the second particle. From weighing the box, the observer already knows the total energy lost. By subtracting the energy of the first particle, they calculate the energy of the second. Next, using the inferred shutter time and the measured arrival time of the second particle, they compute how long that particle was in flight. At this point, they now possess both the energy and the time of flight of the second particle. This is where the paradox strikes. In quantum mechanics, energy and time are non-commuting observables. You cannot in principle know both with arbitrary precision. And yet, this setup seems to allow exactly that, 
It seems to allow us to reconstruct the past with classical certainty, but quantum mechanics tells us that's not possible. Resolving the paradox, the quantum past is fuzzy. So how do we resolve the paradox? Einstein, Tolman, and Podolsky point us to the heart of the matter. And I quote, the apparent contradiction disappears once we realize that the past motion of the first particle cannot be determined as precisely as we assumed. Let's unpack that. In quantum mechanics, there is no way to measure the momentum of a particle without disturbing it. Consider a seemingly clever method, like measuring the Doppler shift of infrared light reflected off a particle. It might tell us the particle's momentum before and after the interaction. But it leaves one crucial piece of information uncertain, when that interaction occurred. You might know the particle's speed, but not its exact location along the path. And without knowing that, you can't say when the shutter opened. This leads us to the true core of the paradox. To determine the shutter time, what we've been calling T sub s, we need to know precisely when the particle passed through a specific point along its path, a point we called q. But here's the problem. We can't know q. Not exactly. Not classically. Even the act of measuring the momentum at q disturbs the particle. And that disturbance erases our ability to say when or even where that measurement happened. Without knowing q, we can't determine T sub s. And without T sub s, we cannot reconstruct the energy or the arrival time of the second particle. This is not a technical oversight. It is a conceptual revolution. It tells us something profound. The past is not a fixed record we can read backwards. It is quantum, fuzzy, incomplete, just like the future. Even when we look backward in time, we are still staring into the same probabilistic mist. Even if you try to measure momentum now and position later, it still doesn't give you the full history because the act of measurement itself disturbs the system. The result, the past remains blurred, uncertain, probabilistic. And this brings us to a deep and surprising conclusion, one that reaches beyond the microscopic world. Even macroscopic events, like the opening and closing of a shutter, are subject to quantum uncertainty in time. Quantum mechanics doesn't just fuzz the future, it unfixes the past. Conclusion, the quantum past revisited. To conclude, the einstein tolman podolsky thought experiment challenged one of our deepest assumptions, that the past is fixed, factual, and fully knowable. Using a simple setup involving two particles escaping from a box, they showed that trying to reconstruct the past with quantum precision leads to a paradox, one that would allow us to know both the energy and arrival time of a particle violating the energy time uncertainty principle. Their insight was revolutionary. Quantum mechanics doesn't just limit what we can predict about the future, it limits what we can remember about the past. The past, like the future, is not fully real until it is observed. It exists only as a field of potentialities, awaiting actualization. And it is the observer who transforms that potentiality into classical history, but only up to a point. Beyond a certain cutoff, Set by the limits of thermodynamics, information, or even consciousness, the past remains inherently quantum, irretrievably uncertain. So what does this mean? An exact reconstruction of past events is impossible in quantum mechanics. The uncertainty of the past mirrors the uncertainty of the future. Prediction and retrodiction are governed by the same quantum rules. And the difference between the two? That difference arises not from nature itself, but from us. It is the observer who gives the past memory, gives the future imagination, and gives time its arrow. This thought experiment laid the foundation for some of the deepest debates in physics, the EPR paradox, the nature of quantum measurement, the questions of locality, causality, and determinism. In the end, the past is not a record etched in stone. It is a wave, collapsing, not just forward, but also backward in time. Thank you for watching Quantum. If you enjoyed this exploration of the quantum past and how even time itself may be subject to uncertainty, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this video. Your support helps us continue producing content that dives deep into the foundations of physics, the nature of reality, and the philosophical questions that science cannot ignore.
And if you have thoughts, questions, or your own interpretation of the quantum past, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, stay curious, stay critical, and stay quantum.